right here on the name of the book that I'm using. The name of the book that I'm using is Circle Life More Series. But the authors. Uh, that's, that's not Alexei, is it? Andre. Uh, I did not. We got an infinite wrote Tetris, so it's named I did not. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> cool. um, uh, you never know. Um, he's an engineer, right? I don't know. I, yeah, I think so. He's not a good mathematician, my understanding. Um, uh, so, th there's, you know, this book actually, I mean, this book has spent the first three quarters of the book actually on ordinary Morse theory, um, just setting up you know, the circulating Morse theory. Um, and then when you get some circulating Morse theory, there's a lot of super intimidating algebra, right? Fine. And so I'm going to try. I'm trying to like read through it and, and not start that way, but just a whole bunch of algebra. Um, and we'll see how much we get. My if if I if I can compute something. And, I mean, I, I don't know that much about circulating Morse theory, so I'm, sort of, I'm trying to dive in. I mean, I have a superficial understanding of what's going on. If we can compute some example, well, I'll compute one example today. And it's super trivial. And then if we can get a non-trivial example, it's something like that. We can learn something. Um, I'll try to state up front some of the applications of, of what we're trying to do. The focus is on the homology, the, the, the Morse homology. But I'll try to, at some point, maybe do some interesting sort of geometric, not just the applications, but just some theorems that we can talk about. Um, and so I'm going to try to keep my notation relatively consistent with this book, just for my own sake. Um, and the first thing, the, the the two bits of the, the really important thing that we want to set up is there's L, which is um, Z adjoined T and T inverse. So that's Laurent polynomials, L for Laurent. Okay, so these are polynomials in T and T inverse finite. Do you know they just they only find out any coefficients are non zero. Okay. And then um, there's L bar, which is um, uh, it's the set of polynomials in I guess I guess the it's a set of P um I'll just write this. It's a set of sums of the form uh, uh, coefficient C sub I T to the I where I is an integer with the property that now here here we have to be kind of careful there's something a little confusing in the book but I'm gonna stick with their notation. Um, such that um, for each of these, for each such thing, the, um, the set of C of i's such that C sub i is not zero, this set is going to be bounded below for each of these. So this is going to be things that are, I, I, said, I said before, things that are, I said the opposite. So this is how he sets it up. I and mean, it's just a matter of how you count things which way or one way or the other. Um, so these are things that are, um, uh, so those, so it's this thing is down in the end. I mean, it, the lower bound may be different for different things. So an example is something, right? The point is, you just, you have finitely many negative uh, terms, negative degree terms, and then arbitrarily many. Uh, uh, arbitrarily many uh, positive degree terms. So if you don't if you don't put this condition, then these are Laurent series, right? Formal Laurent series. So this is a subset. Of, I think it's written this way. Uh, maybe with two brackets. I just forget. Something like this. That's formal Laurent series, um, and this is a subset of that. It's those that are finding the negative direction. Um, some things to notice, for example, about, uh, um, let's see if we get this right. I want to, so these are rings, commuted rings, that's good. Um, uh, I think that one key property, uh, let's look at one minus t. That's an element of L and L bar. Um, the question is, it, is it being verbal? Does it have, a, is it a unit in the ring? And so, um, I think the point is that in this ring, uh, it, 
that lies either in, in, in this formal power series, in, in this power series, right? One minus t has a pack, you know, one over one minus t has a power series expression, right? So there's a series or something which will give you this. So even in whether so you, you if I want an inverse for this, right? But this is going to be important. Is to have that one minus t is going to be vertical. This is the I think the most important algebraic thing we're going to get out of this is that one minus t is a vertical. And I'm, I'm trying to like weed through the algebra and pick out what's what's the really critical thing. Uh, this at least is one of them. This thing is uh, in L bar. Okay. You don't need infinite negative exponents, right? And I think that's the reason he sets it up. I mean, uh, from the geometric point of view, whether you say infinite negative or infinite positive exponents is kind of irrelevant. But algebraically, it sort of is a little more familiar to talk about this. So you can set it up the other way, and then maybe things work backwards somehow. What um, is t inverse? Yeah, one minus yeah, whatever. It's it's it's. Let's just yeah, exactly right. One minus t inverse would be invertible. Just sort of let's side that. Up. Okay, so we're going to be working over. We're going to be doing homology over this ring. So we're going to deal with modules over this ring, um, and. Uh, you know, we get boundary map, which is linear over this ring. And you know, when I say when I think module, I just think vector space. We can just have to you know, say no, it's not a vector space, but it's almost like a vector space. And everyone's got to be a little careful. In particular, you can get torsion. For example, when you take a kernel mod an image, that's that's really you know, as usual. I don't think there's um, you know, this is you know, I forget all my ring theory. But this is nice, you know, theory and ring and all that kind of stuff. It's supposed to work. Um, so it's not a particularly bad grid. Okay, so um, here's here's what's going to happen. We're going to so the goal. So given a um, circle by a Morse function, so this is that from some manifold x plus one. So uh, this is Morse. We will construct a chain complex, C star, the boundary event, boundary star, and it's going to be a chain complex over, over L bar. So this means that I say each C star is a module over L bar, and then each boundary star is a, you know, a L, L bar um, module uh, homomorphism. Okay, so modules are just abelian groups with this action of this thing here, we just think of them as there. So each C star can be a free module over L bar, which just means formal linear combinations of some set of generators, the generators are the critical points of X, of F, and the, the coefficients are allowed to be arbitrary elements of L bar, okay? Um, and then we'll be able to compute a homology, so this will give us some homology, H, I don't know what I want to call it, H star, um, F or something, right? It's going to depend upon uh, choices. It may, depend on, it may depend upon this map F, so we'll just for the moment assume that associated to X, right? And the key thing is that we're going to now, oh, I want what kind of ordinary algebraic topological object is it going to be isomorphic to? And so here's what it's going to be isomorphic to. Um, we, well, it's going to be isomorphic to something which can be described in other purely algebraic topological ways, and so the thing what we want to the thing we want to do here is we want to um, take this map um, of x over s one and construct here's x mapping s one, and we want uh, horizontally s f, and corresponding to that there is a covering space. X tilde mapping down to X and with a map to R. And this is the normal covering space of the dimensional map, and this is the map tilde. Uh, it's not the universal cover, it's called the universal cyclic, or this is infinite cyclic cover. The easiest way to visualize, I mean, this is super easy to construct. Okay, you've got this manifold X mapping over the circle. Right. X mapping to the circle. And then you want to construct this infinite cyclic cover. You just pick a point on the circle, you cut open, right? 
and then you, you, you so because you know how do you construct the infinite universal cover of the circle? You cut it and glue on z's copies of it, right? So then you have uh, r, r, and then you do the same thing here. You take over each of those. You take this little. When you cut it open, you get a chordism, and then you put another one. Okay, so I don't want to make a hash out of this construction. It's pretty obvious. How to construct this x till then this x. Yes. So this construction doesn't. I mean, you can certainly talk about like the cyclic cover. Oh yeah, I mean, without, this, is, this is a much more so guess, this example of much more abstract construction. I'm just trying to make it as concrete as possible. Right. But I guess like one of the things we're skipping is that every manifold admits a circuit body Morris function. I will talk about that. Sure. Of course. Well, okay. Here's the here's the dumb reason every manifold admits a circuit body Morse function. Um, the uh, r the real line. Embeds in the circle. Stupidly, uh, as an open interval, and then you can map the manifold to that thing. And in that case, oh, this so cover space have would be connected? yeah. I think that, that, this is that's that's going to be the dumb example. In that case, this thing would not be connected, right? This would be many disjoint covers. And that also that I mean everything works that I would say works in that case, but that's not the interesting case, right? Um, and the interesting case is when this is homotopically non-trivial. Okay, so, but, so really what's going, we're going to show that, um, uh, you know, what I can compute here is independent of lots of choices, but it's not independent of the homotopy class of this map. So we're going to get something which depends upon homotopy classes of maps to the circle. So it's, it's really going to be invariant of a manifold together with a homotopy class of a map to the circle. And we'll talk about homotopy classification of maps to the circle. It's the opposite of I1, right? It's maps out to the circle, not maps in. And there's so always, there's so always a homotopy being not trivial map from the manifold to S1? Not necessarily, like for a, for a, for a ball, for example. There is a, right. S, S, so it needs to be, if, um, well, it turns out that the homotopy cla classification is just uh, the same as um, the first cohomology. Right, and so that's really what. So it has non -trivial, it has trivial first cohomology, and it has no homotopy. Um, but you know, the basic idea is, I mean, it's not everything. Is this, you have some, if, if if you have a connected covering space of this kind, but we'll I'll, I'll try to get there. Um, um, yeah, that is something we need to spend some time on. Um, Uh, okay, just a quick, uh, two things I'm forgetting to say, the purely procedural. One is I will not be here on Friday, but Jonathan Williams, the postdoc here, you may know, is going to come in and talk about his work. And um, it's interesting, it's related to search Morse two functions, mass to two dimensions, and so on, all four manifolds. So I think it's pretty cool and kind of cutting edge. So um, that's just an extra, you know, a side topic. It will it'll interrupt the flow of this, but it should be interesting. So the second thing is evaluations. Um, I don't know how good grad students are at going out evaluations, online evaluations, but please do it. I'd appreciate, I'd, I'd appreciate positive or negative comments. Um, and I'll remind you again, you know what to do, right, if I go online. So uh, I definitely, whatever you say, I'll read it carefully and take it to heart. So, um, okay, that's it. Um, Okay, so you get this this covering space now. So you can compute the homology of the covering space, right? But there's more to it because the, the the this covering space has an action of z on the integers. So z acts on x tilde. In other words, if you give me an integer and a point in x tilde, then I'm going to tell you what the integer applied to that point is. It's just you take this point and shift it up or down that many levels, okay? So in other words, an integer n applied to a point p, so p is an x tilde, and n times p is going to be an x tilde. But we're not going to, since it's kind of n integer times point already sort of means other things to us, like a coefficient in front of a thing, let's, let's use a variable. Let's, let's instead call this Let's instead call this, uh, um, actually, maybe the best thing is just to say there's, there's a 
it's always going to be generated by what one does, right? So let's just give a name to the translation that's one, call that tau. And that's shipped up by one level, so then that's going to be tau to the end. And that's just a, okay, so that, that's what the action of Z is on here. Um, um, and uh, all right, now one thing that's good we're going to be careful of is whether we mean that we want to shift up or shift down, and which way we want to you know, relate that to. So let me try and sort that out in, in detail when I, when I get there. But it could be either way at the moment. Um, Okay, now that means that if Z acts on, if something acts on a space, right, I mean, any, any, any map from a space to itself gives, induces a homomorphism from the, uh, the homology to itself. And if it's an nice, if it's a tau is a diffeomorphism, so you get an isomorphism from the homology to itself, and then you get arbitrary powers of that isomorphism, and that gives you an action of Z on um, the homology. And what you want to think is that that makes x tilde h star of x tilde into a um, module over. So this here's the here's here's the next bit of how to wrap your head around. Therefore, h star of x tilde is naturally a module over. Over L. Now I haven't got it, the, the wrong column, the infinite ones yet, just the, the wrong column. So, so um, we have to understand what um, you know. So, in other words, I want to know what something like a. So, what does it mean to be a module? It means that I should be able to multiply elements of the homology by elements of this ring. Okay? So an element of the homology is the equivalence class of cycles, etc. etc. Um, and so but, but the point is if I have this action, this action is tau star, okay? It goes from the star x tilde, take the star x tilde. And so then if I have some polynomial, P is um, you know P is equal to Sum of uh, C i T v i. That choice. Um, f. And then I use f. Uh, Q of What's your voice? Q of t. Right. Is L. Okay. So the exponents are they're finite with many non exponents, but they could be positive or negative. Then I need to know if and if uh, and if a. Then I need to tell you what Q of T is. That should also be Q of T times A is just the sum of C sub I, C sub I's are integers, times tau star to the I um, of A. Okay, so that just means you can, this, this is just, you, the T it becomes tau, that's all it's saying. Um, I see, because this, when you say, so this is homology over the this, right, this is ordinary, ordinary simplicial cellular singular way of homology over the integers. Initially, it's just a module over the integers. But now, because I have this action of Z on it, I can reinterpret it as, I can reinterpret it as a module over this um, ring of around polynomials. Okay? Um, it's, why might that be good even if you didn't care about single symbols? about um, circle by Morse theory. First of all, this thing, if x has any non-trivial homology at all, other than zero homology, um, it, x, h star of x tilde is going to be, in general, infinitely generated. Okay, like say you have, you know, say you have a non-trivial loop in x, which is, which is not mapped, which doesn't unwrap the circle, or even better, like it's a surface, surface that doesn't balance something in x. Then you're going to get infinitely many copies of those, and and they're going to, you know, if the surface doesn't bounce. What am I trying to 
to say. Anyway, you, you get infinitely many generators as you go, and they're 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 not necessarily homologous to each other. So you get you can in principle have you know this x is still does not compact, and who knows right? You could have arbitrarily much interesting topology happening at all levels, and then so it will not in general be finitely generated over z, but um, this is going to make it finitely generated over well it, it, at least algebraic has the potential to make it finitely generated because all those things that seem different now suddenly just become multiples of each other by some element of the ring. Okay. That makes sense? So this is now a fact we can now think of, you know, talk about the rank over L, for example. Um, and um, so that's naturally a, a module over L. And then what we, what we want to do is you want to form, so thinking of it as a module over L, um, then you can form, you just sort of formally form the, this thing, which as a sort of algorithmic impaired person, this is the sort of thing that terrifies me. Right? <laughs> okay. Um, but what this what does this really mean, right? So this is the tensor over an L with L bar. Okay, what you're really, you know, if you're just doing full algebra, you're supposed to say this thing is a ring itself, but it's also a module over L, and et cetera, et cetera. But all you're really doing is you're saying, well, formally we just now allow ourselves to have Many. I mean, this this introduces new elements that weren't here, right? So this is bigger than this thing, right? Um, there may also introduce relations, right? It, this does all sorts of weird stuff to it, right? Um, but we just sort of, you know, the way I do, I hold my nose and, 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 and just hope, right, and see what happens. And what, you know, you just remember you're now allowed to multiply by things in L bar, right? And so we're now allowed to multiply by these semi-infinite Morant polynomials. And um, so we now, first of all, we now have things in, in this big object. We now have things that um, have infinitely many, you know, we now have sort of infinite sums in there. But we also may have relations that weren't there before. Okay, things, things that were that were different before. Like one minus like two. Minus two. Yeah, precisely, and that's the and the claim is that this is what goes in this block. This homology is going to be, um, so the answer is the big result is that this is going to be isomorphic to this. And that's going to be. One, so I want to work out. I want to work out the left hand side here for for S one for the non-trivial map. Oh, remember this X tilde um, correspond is is uh, depends upon the homotopy class of this map. Right. Yes. So I mean, but isn't it? Because I'm still confused about this distinction between the V cyclic cover and sort of the one you get by this construction. Because isn't it? There, there, I mean, the, in, in algebraic topology, you know, covers are, care, are classified by the um, subgroup, right? That so you're taking Z. So, so the, uh, right, so the, um, the, uh, actually it's the, I mean, I get a, a, a map on pi 1, right, from pi 1 of x to pi 1 of s1, so that's a map to z. And it's the the, the um, and then the this covers of course is characterized by the image of pi one of that and that's the kernel of this map. So infinite cyclic covers are covers corresponding to subgroups whose quotient is c. Okay, normal subgroups whose quotient is c. And so there are lots of different ones. Any any normal subgroup. So this this is this is the infinite cyclic cover corresponding to the kernel of f star. I see. So F star could be like in Z. F star could be the map, right. If I got a map from the circle to the circle, I could take the one that maps around many times. But is that going to correspond to like different? Yeah, well, maybe we'll do that example. I, mean, I, guess, I haven't thought I, that's I good. See. So those are different homotopy classes of maps, right? Right. And, um, I, don't see, I don't see how the left here. Well, there's an action just... also on L on it, right? So this thing. Right, so if you take the circle, well, if you take more complicated manifolds, you can definitely get a very different cover. So this, 
this this thing all, all by itself could be different if k complicated manifold. So let's just take the circle for the moment, right? But then no matter which, as long as you're taking something non-trivial covered, right? You know, non simply connected, I mean a, a, a connected one, that all can be the circle, right? So this thing's gonna be the same. But the action of L on it is different depending upon uh, you know. So is that like how many times? Yeah, how many times you're right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so so if you, if you have the the map that takes us, if f is originally the map that wraps the circle around itself three times, right? Then, um, just the degree. Then, right? then, then the, the this uh, um, then this action tau is going to shift up sort of three three levels instead of taking it, right? And uh, so, in, if, when you so let's work circle, out examples. Doesn't sorry. Well, yeah, go ahead. So yeah. when you match a circle, it isn't asking what the what's the type of that map? The same as asking what the degree of that map is? Uh, circle to the circle. It's circles with circles, yes. But oh, other oh, like more complicated manifolds, it's more than just degree. It's more than just degree. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, let's just quickly do... Uh, well, so, so, okay, I've already told you that this C star is going to be generated over L bar by the critical points of F. So in particular, if there are no critical points of F, then this thing's got to be zero. Okay. So, what what is a another name for a smooth map to the circle with no critical points? A bundle, a circle, a bundle over the circle. Okay. Smooth bundle over the circle. Cir a smooth map to the circle with no critical points. It has local triviality, right? Because that's, you know, anywhere on A over any interval, it's a product, right? Using using gradient like vector field locally. So it's so um, it's one way to think about this quantity then is this is an obstruction to fibering over the circle. A manifold fibers over the circle if um, X what it means to say X fibers over the circle. And this is, you know, Interesting question in general. If x fibers of the circle, if um, there exists uh, f not the x s one, we have no critical points. Okay. So if we believe all of this, then um, well, what you could do is you could say in any particular homotopy class of maps to the circle, is there a um, is there a vibration of the circle, right? Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe what I should have emphasized on the left-hand side here can be set up entirely independent of the particular choice of f, and just can be set up purely out the way just saying about the homotopy class of maps, the circle that determines x tilde, as we were just discussing, that's just given by the subgroup, the action of, of l on it is, you know, it's purely homotopic, right? So there's no, you don't really need to know exactly what f is to know this, right? And you can, in principle, compute this. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, but so therefore, um, if you know, so I think in actually the book I'm reading sort of uh, also um, you might call x tilde comma psi. I mean, just psi is a so psi is a homotopy class of maps to the circle. I mean, that's sort of bad notation because. It really x tilde is determined by psi. You may either l x tilde of psi and max s1. Then you can compute the left hand side. Um, then uh, if h star of x tilde psi tensored over l with l bar equals zero, no, it does not equal zero. Lower star. Lower star does not equal zero, then Psi does not contain that homotopy class does not contain a vibration of a bundle of a circle or a vibration of this. We would say X does not fiber over um, uh, over S1 in that homotopy class. Okay. Um, and uh, you know there are important questions, some of which maybe I'm not sure, some of which have been resolved quite recently, um, about what's called virtual fibering. Mm -hmm. that a, say that a manifold virtually fibers over the circle if it has a finite 
sheeted cover covering space with fibers over the circle. And I don't know the exact state of affairs, but there, there's sort of a, uh, there's conjecture every hyperbolic three manifold virtually fibers over the circle, for example. Um, I don't think that's resolved, but um, in, in, in three manifold topology, you say something's virtual if it had, if, if something virtually satisfies a certain property that has a finite sheet cover that satisfies, satisfies that property. There are lots of virtual, virtual conjectures in, in three manifold topology. But you know, understanding when something does or does not fire over the circle gives you lots of interesting information about it. Okay. So that's one way to think about this is the structure of fiber. Did you just quickly say what virtually fibering over Virtually fibered. Okay. Say M virtually if the cover doesn't a blob finite sheet cover finite sheet. There exists a finite sheeted finite cover and tilde of N which block. And any, any, like, it could be, well, I guess it's... Well, it could be, and the, the question asked doesn't nail down the homotopy class, for example, virtual fiber, so they can look over all homotopy classes and so on. And I'm not sure that this is actually good. This, this, is, this is so sort of uh, straightforward in some sense compared to the techniques they really use that this is probably just lays out that you probably do this, carry this stuff through for this question about virtually fibering, and that just lays the groundwork, and that's the easy stuff. Um, okay, so uh, let's um, yeah, let's let's just compute this for a So if so, just an example we can set up is that um, if x equals s one and uh, c is the uh, homotopy class. Trivial map of the identity. Right? I mean, point, I, I mean, in this case, it is going to be zero, but I want to show that it actually is zero, right? Because that's sort of weird, also, because the circle. And, and in general, this should work for anything that does. I mean, this is sort of a little bit hard to see. The first time I looked at this, I was kind of skeptical that it would that this would equal zero if it did fire over the circle, right? That's that's what this theorem says that because if it fires over the circle, the right hand side is zero, right? And so it's hard to see the left hand side is zero because you know, can fiber over the circle and have all sorts of interesting homology, right? It's just that homology is not being picked up by these critical points. And but it's this tension in L bar that kills all that interesting homology. And so, and that's this one minus T inverse being uh, invert, one minus T being invertible in there. So I want to do that in this case and see exactly where that one the invertibility of one minus T kills the homology. Because it is not true that the homology of R is zero. I mean, everything except one is zero, but um, so x tilde equal R, and then h star of x tilde um, is just uh, is, is, is zero of x tilde. Um, and uh, yeah. the what's the, the action now is it's it's trivial. So if I pull this off, right? So each you know the 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 the, the tau right would be an entity as the translation. In this case, you're not you're not doing anything. I mean, you're you're shifting. You know, h zero is generated by any point you want, right? If you take a point, you shift it up. It's still the same. It's homologous to what you had before. Okay, but it's a zero the zero cycle. Right? Maybe tau star. 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 So we want to see, and, and so the point is that if we think about it in terms of these polynomials, let, let's let's give a name to the generator first. Um, so H generator uh, zero x tilde, or something. Maybe calling it one seems dangerous. 
of A. Um, and then the point is that A over, over L, A is equal to T times A. Okay? That's, that's exactly what this is saying. T, where now, so this is as a module over L bar, as a module over L. Okay? You with me? Because this is just saying that tau star is the identity. T, what does T times A mean? So I'm looking at the case where my polynomial Q of T is just T, right? T times A is tau of A, the tau of A today. Okay? So what that means is that um, uh, 1 minus T times A is 0. Uh, do I don't want to say 0 or no. Um, okay. And, uh, but 1 minus T is a, now now over, so this is over L. But now when we tensor with L bar, right, um, over L bar, one, you can divide by 1 minus T, right? And so as soon as you can divide by something, then there 1 minus T um, is a vertical, is a unit. So you can divide by it, therefore A is a And that's all right? And so um, therefore A equals 0, therefore it's H star of X tilde, tensor of this terrifying thing. Um, now, uh, any questions on that? Oh, I see. Because H, okay, so we were expecting H star of the I expect H star of the zero. Because we're, there's like no. We were expecting which, which one? I'm sorry, why? So what have I done? I, I was trying to verify, I mean, I, I'm not trying to justify this this claim. I'm sort of doing the, con the contrapositive of this claim oh, is right. that is that contrapositive of this claim is that if f fibers over the circle, then um, so what you've just shown is that there's no obstruction to the circle yeah, fiber over right, itself. Right. Okay. <laughs> but what I was really trying to do is compute. It, what what I was trying to do is show the algebra of how even though this thing is B non B B non trivial, tensor with L bar can kill it, right? And this is a very particular example. And we should look at and in other words. Because the only evidence up to that that we had that something that if something fibers over the circle, the reason I, I knew beforehand that the homology should be zero is because there's no critical points. So this part is zero. Right. And so now I wanted to see, well, just purely algebraically, why is it zero in this case? Right. And um, so you can, why, I don't want to write it down, but why does this work for something, you know, say, just anything else that fibers over the circle? Um, the point is that you, your, when you take the uh, x tilde, what's it going to be giving you more? If, you, if x fibers over the circle, and you take the corresponding lift x tilde, it's going to be a, it's going to be end up being diffeomorphic to a product. X to, x may not be will probably not circle across something of good I mean, so generally. Well, that doesn't mean that S, X is equal to S1 cross fiber, but let's, you know, let's let N fiber. And then it claims that X tilde is going to be diffeomorphic to R cross N. Okay, because once you, one would, the point is once you slice um, a lot of one fiber and open it up, it's, a, it's then cobordism with no critical points, therefore that's a product. And then you stick on another cohort with no product, no trivial points, and so the product structure extends all the way. And so then this is homotopy equivalent, of course, to M. So therefore, the homology is the same as the homology of the fiber, right? And so H star, um, H star of X tilde is just going to be equal to H star of M. And the action is going to be trivial. That's the whole point because you slide it. You know, the action just shifts you up by one. So how? Um, Tau star is always going to be the identity map, right? And as soon as you have the identity map, anything is equal to t times itself. So one minus t times anything is zero. So over L bar, anything is zero. Okay. So I feel like you don't want to say a equals zero, but like 
L bar and I is uh, well, what I mean is A equals a zero after in tensoring in, in the tensor. So, you know, to be really correct, right, these are not the same A. Should be really like A. You should be A tensor one. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's much better. A tensor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so and then you can, the point is A tensor one. If A generates, then eight tensor one generates. Okay. So then the same thing happens here in the draw. Um, Now let's. Um, so you know, this ten, it's, it's it's a funny thing that this. Um, you know, when, when I when I talk briefly about setting up the Morse homology for cohortism, right? Um, you know, we we observed that the Morse homology for cohortism could be high. The, the ordinary homology for cohortism. Could have lots of highly non-trivial stuff coming from the bottom m zero. Say it's a cohortism for m zero and m one, and then the more homology picks up none of that, right? Because it only looks at the critical points. And so, for example, it could be m zero across the interval, and we get no critical points, so no homology. And then we realize that what's really going on is that the more homology is picking up the relative homology. It's picking up the homology of the whole thing, rel the bottom okay, bottom layer. And so this is some sort of infinite version of that. It's sort of, you know, this thing is the the um, we're sort of picking up the relative homology, where it's rel sort of minus infinity, right? It's rel the bottom that keeps slipping away from us. That's why uh, that's that's my best attempt at um, explaining what's going on. It's very similar to that s situation where we, we we ignore completely the homology of the level set and we just sort of keep pushing it down and down and down. That's why we have these. these this infinite rate to work with. Um, so, all right. Um, so let's try and start now. Set up this complex carefully, and what you know, our job. We've already, I've already sort of basically told you what it is. But let's write down carefully what the boundary map is, and then ver the the first thing to do is verify the boundary square is zero. And, and then we want, you know, I want to run through all the stuff we did with ordinary morphology in this setting. So the uh, C star, I'll get C K, um, and this is the Morse. This is the actually th this, by the way, I, uh, the, the name I never mentioned here is Novikov. Okay. All of this is this is called Morse Novikov theory. Morse Novikov homology, I guess. And um, that this this ring of semi-infinite. The wrong polynomials is often called with the Novikov ring. And this is set that up for that. It's exactly the set. So if you've heard of this ring in other contexts, I believe it really was set up originally for this set. Um, so C star is going to be the um, D L bar mod C ox C K is the free L bar module generated by So we just take um, critical points of the next k with arbitrary coefficients from this from the ring. Um, and then boundary, right, so it, it's, yeah, I'm really just kind of counting things the other way. So the boundary, which goes from ck to ck minus 1, is given as follows. So the boundary of a critical point, p, is going to be equal to the sum of all critical points q of the next k minus 1. Of course, I need to choose a very good line vector field. And then I'm going to take this n sub pq times q. But n sub pq is not going to be in this ring no more. 
another choice I need to make, which is I need to pick some kind of reference point in the circle. Um, and so, maybe I should so choose a point B and choose a point to the regular value, regular value uh, Y in the circle. Um, so, N sub so Q is going to be, if I write this way, it's, it's the sum of uh, n sub p q um, i t v i for the formal variable t, okay? and n sub p q i, sorry, n sub p q i is equal to the number of flow lines from p down to q. Counting downward flow like that, not counting them as negative, right? So that, so this is actually an honest. Uh, this is actually what is this, this thing. So it, it actually has no negative exponents at all, because you don't ever if you're going down, you never count across backwards, right? Um, and then, uh, but it, it's in there, which sits inside L1. Require. The, the main thing that this requires is to know, and this is as well defined, is it requires uh, the um, sort of accountably infinite transversality argument. Because you have you want to know that descending manifolds can be made transverse to all every time you go around. Um, and uh, so uh, but the fact that it's just countably infinite somehow makes it not that bad, right? So you, you need to transfine it. Yeah, something like that. I'm not going to worry about that. So, so let's just assume that we can do And uh, so, I guess we have a lot of time. So the, uh, the, the, the way, the, the proving the boundary squared equals zero is going to be a little trickier. Um, and so we have to sort of, any time we look at a, we have to we have to truncate these polynomials. It, 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 the algebra now is going to get a little bit tricky to prove the boundary squared equal zero. And I'll, so I promise to be kind of well prepared on Monday to to uh, try to nail it on my head. And uh, um, once we get that, then, then then we want to think about the the, the rest of it. The sort of handle slides, and births and deaths, getting chain of equivalence is not going to be that hard. Okay.